Welcome back to the Pepsi Center in Denver as we continue with After Hours. Delighted to have with us a leading candidate for the Calder Trophy as Rookie of the Year, Gabriel Landeskog. Uh, clearly, we would both hope that uh, you wouldn't be joining us on a night when the uh, Avalanche have suffered probably their toughest loss of the season. So let's start there. Uh, how did a game that looked like it was yours in the first period end up going the other way? Yeah, I mean, we came out, came out hard, and I, I think... Uh, if you would have gotten maybe the third one or the fourth one behind uh, Luanga there, it would have been a different game. But uh, they're a good team, and especially when they get one, they get two, they get momentum. So uh, they're they're a tough team to beat, obviously. You and I were talking briefly as you sat down, and, and you made the point they know how to win. It's, it's a veteran team. You guys are learning that, right? Yeah, no, exactly. We're in a uh, winter rebuilding mode like, like we've talked about it before, and um, they've... You know, they're, they're a veteran team. They're, they've been through this before, and they've been through playoffs and, and whatnot. And uh, so they know how to win, obviously. And they, they've got good, good goaltenders, good D, and good forwards. Gabriel, you claim to be from Sweden. <laughs> uh, but there's <laughs> little do. evidence of that in your speech, and some would say very little evidence of that in the uh, style that you play. And that's not to disparage Swedish players, but um, I read an interesting comment about you the other day on the Internet. Somebody said, uh, with the way Landeskog plays, he looks like he was born and bred in blue-collar Canada. Do you take that as a compliment? Yeah, I do. I mean, uh, you know, Canada and, and the United States are, are two of the best countries in the world in, at hockey, obviously. And um, So I, I do take pride in that, and I do take it as a compliment. Where does it come from, though, uh, that style? you always play that way? You know, I think it started with my dad. You know, as, as a young kid, you know, he kind of just said, you know, if you, if you add a phys physical aspect to your game, it's, it's going to help you in the, in the long run. And, um, you know, I just kind of try to develop that, that that side of my game and as a kid you know I was taking stupid penalties here and there and kind of kind of learn learning my way how to handle it and now I think I'm using using it more to my to my advantage so now you've spoken for about two minutes and there's nary a trace of a Scandinavian <laughs> accent in your speech uh, you didn't leave Sweden until you were 16 so how did that happen I, I don't know I mean I, I guess I just paid attention in class uh, as a kid and uh, kind of learning the grammar and the basics and all that and then when I came over to Canada the guys were Guys are giving the, giving me the gears when uh, when my accent came out and I, when I uh, butchered the words or, or whatever. But uh, you know, I went to high school in Canada, so that said I helped. Did the TV show Friends have anything to do with it? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I, I I'm a big believer in Friends, and you know, kind of shut shut the subtitles off once in a while, and kind of had to. Um, had to learn how to listen and, and kind of understand words that way. Here's a tweet from uh, Tia McLaughlin. Ask Gabe about the time he was offered a modeling contract. <laughs> hey now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it, it was uh, it was before the, or during the combine in uh, in Toronto and um, TSM were doing uh, kind of you know a feature on me and Mika Zibaneyad uh, and uh, went to Toronto the Eden, Eden Center and um, you know some. Some guy, we're doing some some thing in H and H and M there, and and some guy came up well, to there, me. Well, there you go. There's a modeling contract. to <laughs> see that sign. <laughs> no, and uh, uh, some guy just came up to me and kind of he he was uh, worked for a Ford modeling agency or kind of asked me if I if I was into modeling and. Uh, I had to deny that one. At H and M. <laughs> yeah, no, he, well, he was just there synergy shopping. Synergy there too, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Swedish company. Exactly. Uh, growing up in Sweden, clearly you were a fan of North American pop culture. So I'm guessing you heard of the Backstreet Boys. Yes, I have. Yeah. And uh, has anyone ever mistaken you for <laughs> Nick Carter? <laughs> <laughs> no. First time I heard it was you this morning. You, you, you threw that one out, out there. But it's the same uh, product. There you go. The same product <laughs> in the hair. That's <laughs> obvious. Yeah. Look, no, look I mean, right at the camera so we can get a better. Which uh, one? Uh, yeah. That one. The guys wave it. <laughs> I can't do it. You are dead ringers. <laughs> pretty solid. Yeah. Well, listen, the Backstreet Boys are so yesterday. You're so today with a growing fan base, clearly from uh, the way you played in February and March here. And uh, that fan base will do anything to get your attention. So check out this picture that someone had in the crowd not that long ago. Uh, it's uh, someone begging you for a prom date. Have you got uh, a date for any proms coming up? <laughs> uh, not yet. I mean, these... Uh these girls are probably the first ones uh, so far, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. I, I've been to prom once, and uh, you know we'll see what happens. Well, I've, you, heard, I've heard, <laughs> though, ahead. that uh, and from you, this is how you answered them. Oh, by the okay, way. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I, you know, very you gotta, succinct. Yeah, yeah. you got to be nice to them. You got to thank the fans. But you are you're you're a, a humble guy, and, and you're very giving to the fans in that. Here, you always take time and warm up with the fans that sit on the bench. You have no problem with that. Always been that way. Well, I mean, I, I think the fans are a huge part of our, our success and, and our lives as hockey players. I mean, they, uh, they're a big part of who we are and, and uh, why we play the game. I mean, it's, uh, you know. But it seems very natural with you as, you know, a lot of guys do it, but 
Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, it wasn't too long ago. I was one of those kids. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you were standing by the glass of your local hockey team and, you know, begging for pucks or whatever it was. So I try to, you know, uh, throw a puck or two over the glass, you know, once in a while and, and warm up and uh, just kind of give it back to the fans. Well, you know, you really engage your fans on Twitter. So how about this for one of your recent tweets? Uh, you said, this is one of the reasons I love rooming with Eric Johnson. And then, you would, and then you attached a picture of his teeth. <laughs> Go ahead and explain. <laughs> yeah, it was actually pretty funny. It was, uh, you know, one of the road trips this year. And, um, he, al he already left uh, to go to the rank t for the game, and uh, he dex texted me. He said he forgot his teeth, and I started looking around, and there they were, and uh, that's what it looked like. It wasn't pleasant, and I had to kind of grab him and put him in the pocket. <laughs> All right, let's go back to a huge goal that you scored in OT uh, against Anaheim here last week. The celebration uh, was unique. You dove headfirst onto the ice. So was this the birth? That right there, the birth of Landis <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, you know, nothing planned, nothing nothing I had planned in, in any sort of way. But, uh, you know, it's heat of the moment, kind of, you know, passion for the game, I guess. Well, you know you're big when they're using your, your name as a verb. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. So. Explain the whole day, though, because yeah. uh, that yeah. was the culmination of a, a rough day for you physically. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the day before I kind of had, uh, you know, some virus or, or uh, got food poison or something like that. And, I uh, had to go to the ER at night and get some IV in me for a couple of hours. And, um, you know, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to play the game, but uh, I think it was one of my worst games of the, of the year or my career. But I uh, was able to get a shift in OT and was able to sneak on past, uh, uh, past the goalie there. So that felt pretty good. All right. You, you asked your fans via Twitter to send you their best examples of Landis Gogging. And, boy, you got some good ones back. There's the tweet. <laughs> and uh, let's have a look at some of the pictures, starting with uh, this one. What do you think of it? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the first one. That's uh, that's the guy that started it. He, uh, you know, it was pretty funny. I, I saw it right away, and, uh, you know, it <laughs> keeps going here. You know, it gets better and better. There we go. That's a nice sign, too. <laughs> so you've obviously... Yeah, here's one of my favorites. That one. <laughs> one of my favorites. Oh, that's kind of Keith. You've obviously taken over t bowing then in this time. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I'll ever take, take that over, but, uh, you know, it's a... I think it's pretty funny. To be I do, too. Uh, tweet from Ali Hakimi. Uh, do you plan to land a scog after every goal? And, and you <laughs> didn't tonight when you scored your 20 seconds, so I guess we That's have the answer. Reason. Yeah, no, it's, it, I'm not planning on, uh, on anything in the future, but you never know. I live in the moment, and, uh, you know, if I score a big goal or something, it, you never know. Daryl's actually got figured out I how this all started. I did. I, I, when you did it, I immediately thought of this goal from Milan oh, Hayduk <laughs> against the Dallas Stars. It was a beauty, dazzling, dusting off of the puck. And then the celebration, w way before your time, but <laughs> look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god you've uh, seen that have you not yeah i've seen it before yes. it's hilarious some of the guys have brought it up in, in the room and uh, could have a little battle interior battle yeah no i think hedgy hedgy's uh you know step step ahead there i think uh you also sent a tweet out not that long ago clearly welcoming the legend peyton manning to denver uh, his decision to sign with the broncos clearly overshadowed what was a great run for uh, the avalanche but i'm guessing you understand that yeah no i mean he's uh he's one of the best in, in the game of football and you know we're the whole team is excited to have him here, and, and uh, I think the whole city of Denver is too in Colorado. So um, I haven't watched a football game live yet, so I'm probably going to get out this, uh, this spring. Well, listen, well, winning the Calder Trophy would be nice, but as a player who clearly is mature beyond his years, I know there's not much I could ask you that would get you to admit even thinking about it, so I'm going to try it in a sneaky way. Do you ever check the game summaries in the morning to find out what Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Adam Henrique have done the night before? <laughs> no, I, I, I try not to, to look at Sports Center or TSN or whatever it might be, but uh, you know you hear about it all the time, and uh, media asks you about it, so uh, you kind of have to deal with it. And you know, I, I'm happy for those guys there. I know Ryan, especially for, from the draft and everything, and Adam a little bit from camp this summer. So, uh, you know, I'm happy they're having great years. Gabriel Landeskog of the Colorado Avalanche, rookie sensations, our guest on After Hours. We'll return to trace the journey from Sweden to Canada next. Back with you at the Pepsi Center in Denver, Colorado, as we continue with After Hours. Our guest is the Avs rookie sensation, Gabriel Landeskog. Here's a tweet from Kyle Craig. He says, I'm pretty sure Landeskog is Swedish. Douglas Murray and Zlatan Ibrahimovic, I'm not so sure about. Doug Murray, of course, plays for San Jose, and Ibrahimovic is a soccer player, right? That's plays right. for Milan. Exactly. So I he's mean, just playing on the names there, I think. Yeah, Landeskog. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty funny. I mean, some, some people have been tweeting me about it. It means, uh, if you translate it word for word, it means uh, country forest. 
country for us, so it's pretty, <laughs> okay. it's pretty random, I guess. But it's, uh, <laughs> yes, you know, yeah. it's pretty funny. All way. right, let's go back to the start. And uh, this picture, I think, is pretty close to it, isn't it? That's me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's me. Captain already. <laughs> yeah. Huh? yeah. I don't know how that the leadership happened, showed immediately. <laughs> So your father, Tony, uh, and you mentioned earlier, was a physical defenseman, and he played for Hammerby of the Swedish Elite League from 77 to 85. Um, you were born in 92, so you never had a chance to see him play, at least not live. But do you think you inherited your physicality from him? Oh, look at that mustache first. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. is. Well, but you've seen these pictures before. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I think so for sure. I, like I said before, he... Uh, uh, I can't stop looking at that mustache, but uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he, when, uh, did the, when did the collar jerseys go yeah. out over oh, I there? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> no, like I said before, he uh, he kind of you know uh, told me that you know if if you play physical, it's gonna it's gonna add another element to your game, and yeah. it, it can you know it can be good for you in the long run. So the the choice to uh, leave Sweden and come over and play junior hockey in in North America, how difficult was I, I suppose it was difficult. I know it was difficult for me just to leave home and play a, yeah. a few hundred miles away. Yeah, no, I mean it, it was difficult at first, but I, but at the same time I was so excited for it, and uh, you know for Kitchener to be, be able to draft me and um, get me there was was awesome, and, and you know they're they're a great great organization. I can't say enough about them, and uh, I knew I knew I had to be patient though the first couple of months, and I knew it was going to be. Uh, and it was going to be tough. And, uh, and what it was the biggest adjustment? I think the game in itself. I mean, it's such a big, big difference from from the game in, in Sweden. And uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, after Christmas, my first year, I felt like felt more confident, and you know, um, got into the team, and you know. The, uh, culture and everything. You know, uh, by the second year there, great coaching, we should say, by the way, from Steve Spot. And by the second year in Kitchener, you were the captain of the team. And I guess looking back on it, could you have imagined making a better decision as to where to go to help advance your career to get to the NHL? No, absolutely not. I mean, um, I've said it before and I said it again, I, I don't think I would have been here uh, if it wasn't for, for my decision to move over and especially for me to play in Kitchener. And yeah. uh, it's such a great city and such a good organization. And um, for Steve, Steve Spot to give me that. Uh, you know, opportunity to play and develop as a player and as a person, it was it was unbelievable. Maybe you've answered this tweet from Shelley, but she wants to know who from the Kitchener Rangers would you most credit with your development? Uh, from the team or from just organization? Well, the organization. Wise? Well, I think it must have been Steve Spot then. Uh, you know, he's uh, he was a guy that that was able to trade me from trade my rights from from Plymouth when when uh, when they drafted me and. Uh, to get me to Kitchener and to, to give me a chance to stay, stay patient with me. And, uh, you know, it, it was awesome. And I had have nothing nothing bad to say about Kitchener. The draft last year in Minneapolis-St. Paul, you knew you were going high. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins has been picked first. And uh, here's a great exchange between you and your parents. You're sitting there and you're waiting for the next selection. So let's just listen to what you said. You nervous? I am. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony and Cecilia, pretty cool. You, not so much. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I was probably the most nervous I've been in a, in a, in a couple of years. Yeah. But, uh, you know, at the same time, uh, it was so much fun. And my, my dad and my mom, they just said, you know, just enjoy it. And um, it, was, it was an awesome day. Well, so you heard Kitchener. We just saw you there jump out of the seat. And then you realized there was another Ranger uh, probably going <laughs> in the first round. And what if they had called Ryan Murphy's name? He went 12th to Carolina. But what if? That would have been awkward. <laughs> what an assumption that it's, was on uh, your part. Yeah, no, I was, like I said, I was just so, so, uh, so pumped for that. And I was just so excited. And, uh, you know, it was just such a great day and such a great moment. Uh, I would think a budding rivalry, a uh, friendly rivalry between you and, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. True? Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. He, uh, We got to know each other pretty well there during, during the draft and during the combine and, and all, the, all the stuff around it. So I've uh, been having a lot of fun playing against him this year and especially so many times. And uh, I'm so happy for him to, to, to for him to do so well. I mean, he, it's not a surprise to me, though. He's uh, he's a great player and an even better guy. Someone asked you what you intended to do with your first NHL paycheck, and you thought about it for a moment, and you said, "I think I'm going to help my brother Adam buy a car." Is that what you did? Yeah, I know. I didn't. I didn't help him with a car, but we uh, we just bought bought an apart apartment back home and bought a condo back in Stockholm. So uh, for him to be able to to move out of my, my parents' house. It was, uh, it was awesome. Okay, quickly, Peter Forsberg, uh, you get to Colorado, and one of the things that you witness, one of the first things as a member of the Avalanche is the retirement ceremony for Peter Forsberg, and I think it's fair to say that you were sitting there in awe of, uh, of one of your heroes. Uh, with the way he hung on, trying not to get <laughs> into that foot problem, there was a chance you could have played with him. Did you ever think about that? <laughs> no, that would have been, that would have almost been, uh, been too good to be true, but uh, you know, that night was, uh, was a dream. 
dream in itself, and I was just trying to try, trying to enjoy the whole thing. Tweet from Daniel Blanchett. Uh, what which part of Forsberg's game do you do try to incorporate in yours? Well, I think uh, the way he could dominate the game, both physically and, and with his skill, I think he, you know, I think everyone knows and has seen his he's had his hits with with the puck, and for him to be able to protect the puck, and uh, but but at the same time, he's he's uh, a level above everyone else, and his skill is just uh, tremendous. So. Yeah. Will you uh, will you tweet something about this great experience uh, after the game tonight? <laughs> about this interview? Yes, absolutely. I will. <laughs> it absolutely. would really make it tonight. <laughs> yeah, mention, mention our names um, quickly. Heading into the draft, you had three high school courses to complete to uh, to matriculate. Did did you do it? Did you finish them? The, after the after the draft? Yeah. Or no, the draft? But I, I think you had said that you were going to finish them after the draft. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, things got in the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it didn't really work out that ah, way. But well. uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, though. <laughs> no, <I'm> just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you were a good student. I know that as well. All right, Gabriel. Thanks a lot for yeah, your time. Thank really you. Thanks for having me. Gabriel great Landis, good luck the the very rest. impressive rookie for the Colorado Avalanche, leading contender for the Calder Trophy. Our guest on After Hours. Back to wrap after this.